It's about the restoration of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. All right, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans. I'm your host. I apologize. I got cut off on that last segment, so I'm going to pick up right where I left off. And then we're going to get into the savings account theft and the bailout, the bail-ins that are going on around the world. You see, the problem, America, is this. You have, you have a wealth of knowledge, but you have a wealth of knowledge that is absolutely useless to you. You can't tie a knot. You wouldn't be able to start a fire with two sticks if your life depended on it, and it may well someday be. You don't know the principles and the concepts and the foundational ideas that our founders gave us. You don't grasp it, and you don't care. Instead, you're worrying about, you know, what sitcom is on tonight. You want to be entertained. You know, that was the fall of Rome. Give the people bread and circuses, but let's not let them have, you know, it, it, all we got to do is try to keep them occupied and entertained, and they'll do whatever we tell them to do. If you don't think that this government, with all of the vast resources that are available to it, all the literally hundreds of billions of dollars in black budget money that they've got socked away and they can just print more at, at will, if you don't think that they've studied and built models and run endless, endless, endless projections about how the American people are going to do this or do that with supercomputers that can try to pretty much figure out based on the, 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 the failing of humanity, the failures of humanity, and the foibles, to figure out how you're going to react, you're wrong. They are actively working against you. And you're allowing them to continue that work when you are worried more about what Kim Kardashian's bra color is today or whether or not, you know, a a baseball team is going to win the pennant than you are about understanding what did our founders have to say about what the Second Amendment has it means for us. I mean, it's under threat. Kerry the other day signed off on the small arms treaty from from the United Nations, the most dysfunctional organization on the face of the planet. Are you prepared to really be able to have a true understanding and a dialogue about that? Can you have a, a true art other than just parroting and piping out something you've already heard somewhere else? Do you understand the underlying concepts beneath the words? Do you know why Obamacare is wrong? Not just that it's wrong because you're afraid of it. But why it's wrong? Because it's the redistribution of wealth, which is a standard socialist slash Marxist slash fascist concept. And all of those ists and isms mean one thing. They're all part of the authoritarian or the totalitarianistic think. All of those authoritarian ideals and forms of government have one thing that is a common denominator across all of them. You are a slave. You are a peasant. You have no say in what's done to you, around you, at you, on your behalf, against your best interest, nothing. And you're led around like a bull with a ring in his nose. Is that, the, is that the freedom that you truly envision is what you want for your life? You just Are you living in the matrix? You just want to go back to sleep as long as they give you steak and wine? Please. 
then how are you going to explain that to your children? Because the world they're going to wake up to is going to be far, far worse than anything you could even, than, than the stuff of your worst nightmares. You know, our, our nation is in debt. To a, to a staggering perspective. And we are now in a scenario where the European Union is effectively working to wipe out the accounts of people in these bail-ins that are taking depositors' money. We saw it in Cyprus where the Cyprus government came in and said, anyone who has more than 100,000 euros in the bank, we're taking a percentage of that. Now, here's the problem. Like everything else that's a bad idea, you know, the virus, the germ, had to start somewhere. And it started in Cyprus. But like all dangerous diseases... It's spreading. The questionable practice of bail-ins, that's what they're calling these guys. Listen to what I'm telling you here. They're calling these bail-ins. And it's to keep banks solvent. And it's spreading. This is spreading in the countries of Europe. The banks are broke. The International Monetary Fund is, is bereft. The central bankers of the European Union, which is, and, and by the way, the Federal Reserve is nothing other than the, federal, the, the central bank of the United States. And, the, and they're broke. Or, they're, if, if they're not broke from buying the bad debt of the nations, they're utilizing the opportunity to sponge the resources away from the common common, uh, resource pool of the nation. Banks are seeking money from sources. Guess who the source is? They're large depositors. The funds are simply being taken and applied to a bank's recapitalization in lieu of a government bailout. You don't think that can happen here. I hear you. I've heard it before. We didn't think national health care, universal health care, socialist medicine would come to America, did we? We didn't think we'd ever have an illegal alien sitting in the White House, did we? We didn't ever think that we would allow an NSA to monitor everything we do and store all that information in dossier databases to be used against us as an enemies list at a later date. Did we? Everywhere, financial people are coming out and spreading the word. This practice of bailing in, in other words, instead of the government coming up with money to bail out a bad bank, They're going to their big depositors and they're saying, we can keep 47% of everything you've got over a dollar X. And then what do you get for that? You get a certificate, a piece of paper that says, you you know, it's an IOU. Well, if the bank is already insolvent, what good is an IOU? This started a year ago in Cyprus. It's called the bail-in. The island nation was refused financing by the International Monetary Fund and the European Central Bank. So what they did is they essentially said, look, everybody who's got money in this bank, and by the way, uh, 
Cyprus was kind of viewed like Switzerland is viewed by the Soviets and the Russians. They had huge sums of money, like the like in in the United States. We look at the Cayman Islands, right, and the Mediterranean. I mean, the uh, excuse me, the Caribbean banks. Um, lots of Russians and Europeans stashed money in these banks in Cyprus. They were looked at as a safe haven for hiding large deposits of cash in both Europe and Russia. They had the ability to do um, all kinds of shell companies and playing paperwork games and holding companies. And, you know, they they set up all of these, uh, you know, legal trickeries, legal fictions, if you will, in order to allow people to pump money into these banks where they could hide it from their own governments, from taxation and what have you. And a lot of it was illegal money. Cyprus was considered to be a leader in this type of quiet, um, quiet uh, hiding place of money. So here's the problem. As these banks became uh, more and more insolvent, the Euro- the European Union determined that look Greece uh, uh, excuse me Greece Cyprus is no longer a good risk for us to continue to bail out the international monetary fund said look there's no more money there's no more water here in the well for us to give you so they came upon this great concept they just stole the money from their depositors now you know if you did that if your lawyer took the money that was that was um, left in his trust account, he'd go to jail. But the government passed a law that took 4.3 billion euros in deposits that belonged to over 14,000 depositors in this one bank alone. It's called the Lakey Bank or Lakey Bank, L-A-I-K-I. Any depositor who had more than $100,000, they took the money, everything over above a hundred grand. Any, and, and guess what? Afterwards, the bank folded anyway. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. So then when the bank folded, they took whatever was left. You know, they left you with a hundred and they deposited that in the Bank of Cyprus. So then Cyprus, the Bank of Cyprus said, well, we got the same problem. So they seized deposits, too. And then what they got, what they gave you in return was shares in the bank. Depositors in Cyprus have collectively lost 10.6 billion euros. Now, for the record you got to understand what that translates into in U.S. dollars. And right now, the euro, the euro dollar uh, conversion rate is about 1 to 135 or one or $1.40. So that means somewhere around $14 billion was stolen from depositors. These bail-ins are becoming increasingly acceptable practice around the world. Because there's no one else left to bail them out. The IMF won't do it. The World Bank won't do it. The European Union won't do it. The Fed won't do it for us. In Poland, the government raided private pension funds to reduce government debt. So they went in and they said, well, we got all these pension funds here that are worth, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars. So let's just take what we need and give them an IOU. Don't tell me that that can't happen here in the United States, ladies and gentlemen, because it's been happening for generations now. This, the trust fund for Social Security is a piggy bank with nothing but paper IOUs. If you don't know what I'm talking about, understand who owns our national debt. That $17 trillion you hear about, $6 trillion of that belongs to the Social Security fund. Six. 
And what we have is a pile of IOUs that would reach from here to the moon. But it was a trust fund. They've stolen the money. It's gone. In this, in, what Poland did was even worse. They went out and, t- and transferred from private bank accounts and pension funds these monies, and then they handed them to the state, slashing their public debt. you got to be kidding me. So they're paying off their public debt with private pension funds. Here's a quote from one of the from from a financial expert. The Polish government is doing the best that it can to make this sound like some sort of complicated legal maneuver. But the truth is that what they have done is stolen private assets without giving any compensation in return. Guess what? It's spreading. The finance ministers throughout the European Union are taking a similar approach in their own countries. They've approved a plan in the European Union. And this is, I'm telling you, this is spreading like a cancerous virus. It's spreading worse than a cancer because a virus spreads immediately. Ever notice that when you get sick, you get sick literally, you know, you wake up in the morning and you feel like you're not feeling good, you know, and by lunchtime, you're in crisis. By dinner time. You're a mess. That's how fast this is spreading. They've approved in the European Union a plan to force bondholders and shareholders to finance future bank failures before they go to their taxpayers for a bailout. Now listen to me. When you are going to apply to bondholders and shareholders with deposits that, that exceed 100,000 euros, that, I'm telling you, this is broad and open theft. They can cover it with whatever legalese they want, but it makes no difference how you couch it. Theft is what it is. Italy is organizing a form of its own bail-in for the country's oldest bank. It's halted further interest payments and doesn't intend to make up for any missed payments if and when they ever resume making interest payments. So you've got money in the bank. You've got it committed to a, a, at an interest rate. And they say, well, we're just not going to make those payments. And if we ever start again, we're not going to make up the missed payments. That's theft. But you see, you are, you are, you are completely helpless to stop it. The deposits are not touched right now in Italy, but all of the financial people are saying that it's only a matter of time before the depositors get one of these. You know, well, anything over a hundred thousand euros, we get to keep. In Canada. Uh Uh-oh, here it comes. In Canada, the government has written a bail-in provision into its new budget in the Economic Action Plan for 2013. Tell me it can't leap across the pond. It just did. The virus has bridged the gap. The new budget actually proposes to implement a bail-in regime for systematically important banks in Canada. Aha! As a result, there is no longer any truly safe place to put your money. Governments throughout the world are eyeing the depositors' money as their salvation for failed banks. Instead of letting the bank fail... And allowing the depositor to say, well, okay, the bank fails, I get my money out of there, and I can go put it in another bank that hasn't failed. The central banking systems are propping up these banks with our money. The citizenry money, the peasants' money, the corporations' money. I'm telling you, America, this is coming to America. 
What they're going to go after are pension plans. What they're going to go after are 401ks. Yep, I'm telling you, they've already talked about it in Congress. They have already had discussions about how to steal your 401k. If you think I'm lying to you, I'm challenging you to go out to the Internet right now and do a search. Your 401k and your pension, whether it's from a business or whether it's from a public uh, you know, entity like you work for government at some point, all of it is up in the air. If you don't listen to these warnings that are coming from everywhere now, and, and, and you know, you're not hearing it on the mainstream media because they don't want to incite a panic. But I'm telling you right now, one day, those of you who are not listening, those of you who refuse to take your money and break it up into smaller chunks and move it around and get it down below certain limits so that you look impoverished, you're going to lose it. Here's the deal. There was a family in Cyprus. This is a perfect example. They had 750,000 euros in an account. This is a family account. Everything except 100,000 euros was stolen from them. Now, they've gone to court, but come on. Meanwhile, they're bankrupt. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to warn you, there is a financial crisis on the planet. You're being misled and misinformed, and you're being kept you're being kept from knowledge and truth by the bread and circuses concept of Rome. The mainstream ministry of propaganda is misleading you, willfully, knowingly feeding you propaganda. Be educated. Do your homework. Don't take my word for this. I want you to do your own homework. Please do. Educate yourself and understand the implications of what's happening here. We are looking at a global financial collapse. You know, the CBO came out the other day, the Congressional Budget Office, and said that Obamacare is going to bankrupt America by like 2020. 2020, guys, that's not around, that, that, that's not a, a long time off in the distance. You know, oh, Social Security, it'll be there, it'll be bankrupt in 2048. Oh, we got 30 years to worry about that. I'm telling you, we're out of time. Rain this monster in. Take back our nation by a grassroots effort, or we will wake up in a financial crisis that will shut down the world. The heck with the government. They're going to shut down the world. You're listening to America's Voice Now. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now. Find us on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash America's Voice Now and at americasvoicenow.org. We'll return in just a moment. We're going to talk about the propaganda of the media. <laughs> 